So I'm trying to evolve this series of Unity tips and tricks to something that will target more specific audiences since I don't really want to have like 50 videos on the channel named like tips and tricks for Unity like oh nice name bro I get what you mean tips and tricks again uh, I know you would have commented that so don't even lie to me <laughs> so therefore today we're gonna check out five tricks you can use to achieve great visual fidelity aka graphics in Unity and I also want to mention that this video is brought to you all by our patrons Flu Joey Richard Stance, Cupola, Beard or Die, MakeAGame.com, and Couch Ferret. Thanks to your support, I'm able to bring you guys more videos, so you guys rock. All right, now let's get started. First and foremost, a very basic trick, but I still wanna mention this. You can use Global Illumination or GI for more realistic lighting in your scenes. So basically, Global Illumination is a method of letting indirect lighting have a more realistic and actual effect on the overall lighting in your scenes. You can enable GI in the lighting settings if you go to window and then enter rendering and go into lighting settings and pick one of the baking methods that are necessary for GI to work. And actually, if you wanna learn more about GI, I do strongly suggest you to check out my tutorial on it, which I'm going to link in the description that I actually made just for like a couple weeks ago, I think. So it's pretty new and I would strongly suggest you to check it out because it's a full in-depth tutorial on GI. Trick number two, if you're creating an interior scene, don't forget that one of the things that will add realism to your project is screen space reflections. It's also called SSR, and it's a method of adding reflections of the interior furniture onto objects in your scene, such as the floor. So if you look at the interior of your own house, you might see the reflection of furniture on the floor in some rooms, right? To use SSR, by the way, you can either use the built-in effect in Unity's standard post-processing stack, or pick up an asset from the Unity Asset Store. This is also a super popular method for adding reflections to like wet floor and puddles and stuff like that. So even for exteriors, this might actually come in handy. And now trick number three, one of my favorite topics, photogrammetry. Scanned 3D models or photogrammetry being used in games is not like a super new thing, but it's, I mean, we saw Unity demonstrating the power of photogrammetry using like Book of the Dead as at the start of this year. And in very basic words, what is photogrammetry? Though. So it's the process of authoring high quality, reusable and game ready digital assets using multiple photos of original real world objects. And it saves you also time from modeling in 3D sculpting software. So instead of modeling everything, you basically take pictures of like, let's say a tree, right? And then you just feed it into a program on your computer, which then generates the 3D model of that very own tree you took pictures of. And with the complex geometry and texturing and all that kind of stuff. So it's a very complex method and Unity actually has a full-on guide for using and producing such assets with photo photogrammetry. Oh my god, I just can't say the name all the time. <laughs> and I'm just going to include a link to it in the description down below. So if you want to learn more about photogrammetry, especially in Unity, you can definitely check it out. Also, on top of that, there are dozens of assets on the Unity Asset Store that are basically just 3D model packs that are made using photogrammetry. And Book of the Dead assets are also made with photogrammetry, like I mentioned at the start of this topic and they're all available on the asset store for completely free so if you want to take that as like a studying example or just learn how they made it or whatever it might be you know what i mean it's free to download so go ahead and do so and by the way i just remembered book of the dead assets are also using or at least the team used a lot of assets from the mega scans library by quixel which is basically the the most popular library of 3d scanned assets right now so they even use them so i would strongly suggest you to check it out in case you're interested in this. And I'm going to leave a link to the Megascans library by Quixel and also the Book of the Dead asset page on the Unity Asset Store so you can download them for free. And moving on to trick number four, this is going to be regarding the High Definition Render Pipeline or HDRP as it's also called, which Unity published this year along with the Scriptable Render Pipelines. So I would suggest you to use HDRP for your project in case that's, you know, realism is something that you're aiming for as it will enable some options for better graphics. One of these options is called subsurface scattering that we're gonna take a look at in this video. If you watch my overview video that I made of the FPS sample project on Unity's own YouTube channel, I was talking about this a little bit there. But basically, if you've ever placed your hand on top of like a light source, such as a flashlight, you must have realized how light is able to filter through the skin. And even more interesting is the fact that light actually travels inside the skin and can sometimes even make the entire hand glow. The same thing happens with plant 
events in real life. And so now we have this in Unity. And by using HDRP, we enable the option subsurface scattering, which we can enable in the graphics settings. And notice how the plants in the FPS sample project, for instance, have this depth and kind of like a plastic look and receive light from behind more realistically. That's literally subsurface scattering for you. So I think using this effect for your characters like humanoids, animals, and all these plants and vegetation you're using in your scenes, I think will add a lot more realistic lighting. And moving on to number five, the trick number five is for grasses. So when you're working on a terrain or a landscape, the grass covers almost always the majority of the ground surface, right? So having realistic looking grass is therefore crucial, at least for me. And actually thinking of that, I'm uh, let me give you guys a couple of tricks instead of one. First and foremost, you should know that you can use 3D models instead of just textures for grasses too. The 3D models usually look better as they are more complex, but they will also be more performance greedy. So what I do is I use grass models and textures mixed. So I use models with level of detail or LOD or LOD for grass that will be close to my player. And then I use textures of grass patches to cover up areas that are farther off and kind of like unreachable by the player because they're not going to like see it to a full extent anyway, right? So using level of detail is also suggested as it will make it easier to optimize your game. And almost all models that you find on the asset store use LOD anyway. So you don't really have to worry about like adding it by yourself. And the second tip for this, aka number six, is to use something like ambient occlusion or screen space shadows to add realistic depth and shadows to your grass. Grass without such shadows look way too bright and unrealistic, which you can also see like on basically by Googling Unity level design, uh, whereas grass with the shadows look like they have a more complex depth and actual shadows that affect every other patch nearby so that they get affected by each other, right? So using also using a super sampling anti this is like literally number seven but using a super sampling anti-aliasing solution also makes your grass look more dense and richer so using a combination of these like three what is it two three techniques that i just shared can let you create more realistic looking grass in unity so that is pretty much all for this video i hope you guys enjoyed these tips and tricks videos especially now that i'm trying to focus on more on like graphics and you know what i mean specific topics with the series if you do enjoy and want to see more make sure to give this video a thumbs up to show some support and hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on new videos because in 2019 we're gonna have a bunch of new tips and tricks and tutorials and all that kind of stuff. Also, don't forget to check out our Patreon page if you wish to support me to get access to some very cool rewards and in return also have more videos like this. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to be super active in the comment section and in our Discord server. So I look forward to see you guys there if you have any questions or if you just want to say hi or drop in. So yeah, have a good one guys and peace out. Hey.